Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial. So today I'm going to show you how to make these earphones in Blender 2.83. I'm actually basing these ones off a generic no brand name one that I have laying here, around here at home. Um, so these are them and I'm going to be making the original blend file here available on my Patreon. So my Patreons can be able to have a look at this and use it if they want. And um, also I'm going to be explaining it as best I can. I don't really know all of the names to these components. I just thought it'd be a fun tutorial to do. So sometimes I struggle in the tutorial to explain some of the details. Like I don't know what to call them. So if I mess something up, I do apologize. But I think this tutorial overall is going to be fun. I'd like to see what you guys are able to make with it. So let's get started. Okay, so when you see an open up in a blender, go ahead, select all of the default objects, then go X and delete. We're going to go shift A, go to your mesh options, add in a circle. With this circle in your scene, we're going to go down here, click on the add circle settings. We're going to go to the vertices count here. Just, just make it 16 vertices. Hit enter. And with that done, we're going to go to our object mode and go into edit mode here. Okay, so with this geometry selected, what we're going to do is go into our front orthographic view. Then we're going to go R, Y, and 90, and we're going to hit enter. So we've rotated it 90 degrees on the Y axis here. So go back to your front view. And then what we're going to go do is go E to extrude, and then G and X. Okay, just X. Just, okay, let me do that again. So go E, X, and then move it forward like this, okay? So just E, X, so extrude it to about here. If we go to my front view, you can kind of use the grid spacing here as a reference. You can see I just went a little bit over two of these. So just look at that and you'll have a reference point. Then what we're gonna do is come over here holding in Alt, um, Shift and Alt, we're gonna click left click on here. That's going to select this loop of vertices and then we're going to go E and so we're going to extrude and scale this guy in as small as possible to about there and then we're going to hit F that's going to fill those faces. Let's go to our edge select here. Then we're going to go shift alt click on this edge here to loop select it. Then we're going to go control B. We're going to create a bevel and then we're going to bring it out to about here. Okay, So just a nice bevel. And then we're going to go um, shift alt click here and click here to select both of these edges now. And we're going to add in another bevel. So we're going to go control B again, add in bevel, but this time we're going to keep the bevel nice and small. And we're going to roll our middle mouse wheel up just once to add in another division within there. Okay, so just click that in. And what we can also do is just select this loop here and this loop in the middle, go control E and then go to edge crease and just increase that edge crease there, just to sharpen that up a bit. Then we're going to do is hover over here, we're going to go control R. And we're going to just roll our middle mouse wheel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14 times and click. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go control B one more time, we're going to add in a bevel one more time and this time we just want to if you roll all the way down so there's no cut spaces in between we're just going to roll it up once that's going to add in one cut in between the bevel and just click and then right click to put that in and then with these all still selected we're going to go control minus that's just going to shrink that selection and then we're going to go g x and just move it in like this with those edges still selected we're just going to go control e come down add an edge crease and just give that a increase as well. So we should have this right now. And then what we're going to do is come over here, select this edge here. And what we want to do, actually, I forgot about this, we just want to go G, X, move this back a little bit, because I forgot we needed another part here. So just move it to about here. And then we're going to go Shift D to duplicate that. And we're going to go S, and we're just going to scale it down a bit to there. Then we're going to select this edge loop here, we're going to go E, S, and just extrude that down to here. Okay, then we're going to go shift alt and select um, this loop here by clicking on it, we're going to go control B and we're going to just add in a very fine bevel, make sure to roll in one subdivision there. Okay, so now we have a nice sharp tight bevel here, we can also select this edge loop here, go control E and we can go to edge crease and just slide that up to so add a nice crease to that. Now let's um, select this guy we duplicated here, this um, loose edge, and we're going to scale it up to about here. And then we're going to go E, X, and just extrude out in the X to about here. Something like that. So if you look at the front here, you can look at the grid spacing here for reference to get my kind of scale over here. 
And with that done, we're going to go E, S to extrude and scale it down to about here. Okay, that's really good. Now what we're going to do is select this edge here. We're going to go Control B and give that a really tight bevel. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to go Control R and we're going to roll in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cuts and click it in. And then we're going to go Control B with those edges still selected. And we're just going to make sure there's one cut in there as well and just click it in. And with that all still selected, we're going to go Control minus just to shrink that selection. And then we're going to go Alt S and just shrink um, scale it in a little bit. Then we're going to go Control E and we're going to go to Edge Crease and just increase the edges on that as well. Okay, so let's quickly go to our modifiers and to see what it looks like so far, we're just going to add a subdivision surface modifier and come to the viewport here and bump it up to two. Quickly tab out of edit mode. Let's go to object and enable shade smooth. So this is what we should have so far with our modeling. It's looking pretty good. So what we're gonna do is just grab it, go back into edit mode. I'm gonna go shift, alt, left click on this loop here. And now what we're gonna do is go E, X, and just extrude this guy out to about here. Okay, and once again, you guys can look at the grid spacing here for reference. Then what we're gonna do is just go into our wireframe here. We'll just disable the subdivision surface modifier here for a second. Select this edge here, go control B, add in a really sharp bevel there. And now enable it again, let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's looking good. So what we're gonna do is select this um, edge here. We're gonna go E to extrude and S to scale it in to about here. And then E, X, and we're gonna extrude it in. Then we're gonna select both of these edges here. Then we're going to go Control B and just give that a really fine bevel, like that. Come over here, go Control R, just add in one loop cut, double G just to slide it up like this. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. Um, what we're going to do now is go back into object mode, and what we're going to do is go to our left orthographic view. Then we're going to go Shift A, we're going to add in another circle. We're going to go R, X, 9, 0, and then R, Z, 9, 0, hit Enter. So we're just rotating it, G, X, bring it forward. So just adding in a circle, bringing it to the front here. Okay, so go to our left orthographic view. We're going to tab into edit mode. And we're going to just hit F to fill in those faces. And then we're going to go E to extrude it forward like this. We're just creating a disk here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tab out of edit mode of this guy. We're going to give it a bevel modifier. Go make the limit method angle. And we're going to decrease the offset just to give it a very fine bevel here. Increase the segment count to two. And then what we're going to do is add a subdivision surface modifier on top of that. We're going to apply the bevel and then apply this, the, this guy here as well. Go to object and enable shade smooth. With this guy, we're going to go G, X, and just bring it up against here. Like this little plate that sits up against it. Now what we need to do is just add in a cylinder. So we're going to go shift A, go to our mesh options, add in a cylinder. We're going to go G, X, just bring it to the front here, S to scale it down like this, and then S, Z, just scale it up in a Z like that. Then we're going to go to our front of graphic view. We're going to go R, 9, 0, hit enter. And we're going to just bring this guy in here to where the disc is. And we can just grab this guy for now and just hit H to hide it. And with this guy, if we go into our right of graphic view, what we need to do now is with it in the middle, we need to go Shift, D, Y, and just move it over. And then you can go Shift, R, to duplicate that action and then select both of these, go Shift D, Y, and just move them over here. Okay, that doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be pretty small. You're not really going to be able to see it up close. So what we want to do is just go Shift D, bring some of these guys up. Shift D, bring some more up. Shift D, bring them down. And you guys get what I'm doing here. I'm just adding these in here because we're going to use them as a Boolean modifier. So what we want to do is just select all of them, these tubes here. We just want to, um, holding and shift, select any one of them. Go Control J just to join them all together. And then what we want to do is select this disk over here. Go to our modifiers, give it a Boolean. Click on the little eyedropper and select this guy here. Then we're going to go Apply, grab this guy, and then go X and Delete. So now we have this. It's looking really messy, so we're going to go to Add Modifier, and we're going to add in an edge split modifier. Now, I wouldn't worry too much about um, the messy geometry here because this is not going to be deforming and we're not going to be seeing it up close so we can get away with it. So we're going to go object, enable shade smooth with this guy as well. 
Now we can go Alt H, we're done with that part. And that was one of the more trickier parts to make, so don't worry, it's gonna be easier past this point. So let's make something really simple here. We're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in another circle. And by default, it should be 16 vertices. So we're gonna go G. Because we, we changed it by default, it's actually 32, but once you change it, it'll stay that way the whole time. Until you change it again. So we're just gonna scale this guy down over here. I'm gonna go G, Z, just bring it up into the model here. Let's go into our edit mode. We're gonna make sure we go to vertices select here. And of all these vertices selected, we're gonna go E, Z, extrude it down. And then E, Z, Z, and just extrude it down to here. Once again, you can look at the grid spacings here for reference, if you wanna be exact like I am. And then go S to scale it down, like that. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is just hit A to select all of it and just S, scale it down just about this much. So we want a size about here. Okay, that is looking right. So what we're gonna do is go Shift Alt, just click on here to select that loop. We're gonna go Control B and add in a really fine bevel there. And then we're gonna go Shift Alt, click on here to select the bottom vertices, this, this loop of vertices here. We're gonna go E, S to extrude and scale them in. Select this loop of vertices here. We're gonna go Control B, just to give that a nice sharp bevel as well. And then we're gonna go Control R, double click, double G, slide in the loop here. And then we're gonna go add, and we're gonna add in a subdivision surface modifier. Go back into our object, and we'll go to object, and we're gonna enable shade smooth here. So now we have this guy here made. And let's get into next making the actual little thing that sits at the front here that actually plugs into your little soft, soft plastic bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our front view, we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a UV sphere. This UV sphere selected, we're gonna go G, X, and just move it forward here. We're gonna go S to scale it up a little bit. Then we're gonna go R, Y, 9, 0, and we're gonna hit Enter. We're gonna go to Object, and we're gonna enable Shades Move. So with this guy, what we're gonna do is tab into Edit Mode, go into Wireframe, we're gonna select this vertice at the very back. Then we're gonna go Control Plus, Till we get to about here, then we're gonna go X and we're gonna delete the faces. Then what we're gonna do is hit A to select all of these vertices, go E and then right click to let go, and then we're gonna go Alt S and we're just gonna scale this in like this with Alt S. Give it a thickness like this. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this vertice at the front. We're gonna go Control Plus and we're gonna go X and we're gonna delete the vertices. So just those vertices. Grab this guy here, go Control plus once, and then go X and delete the vertices. Then we're gonna go to our edge select here. Shift, Alt, select this edge. Holding and Shift, Alt, so you'll select this edge. Then we're gonna go Control E, and we're gonna go to Bridge Edge Loops, and that's gonna bridge it automatically for us. Then what we're gonna do is select this loop here and this loop here. Then we're gonna go Control B, and we're just gonna give it a nice bevel and roll in one division, like that. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. What we're gonna do now is, okay, so enable proportional editing here. And this is a little bit tricky, but just bear with me. So we're gonna select a loop over here, just one of these in the inside here, and another one next to it, just these two. And then we're gonna go S, and we're just gonna scale that down. But we're gonna decrease our proportional fall off as we're doing it by rolling our middle mouse wheel. And we're just gonna bring it down to here, okay? And we're gonna go S, X, and just scale it along the X a little bit. Okay, just like that, we're gonna tab out of edit mode. And we're gonna to go to our add modifier, we're gonna add in a subdivision surface modifier. And that's gonna give it a nice subdivision there. Okay, so there's a lot of different um, ways these things look, and I've looked at a lot of different images, but this is the simplest one to model that I saw. And what we can also do is just tab back into edit mode. It's very simple to just to do some little adjustments. Go to your face select, go shift alt, just click here to select this loop of faces. And with your proportional editing seal enabled, you can just go G, X, and you can move this back a little bit. Just tweak it as much as you want. But we wanna bring this back of the dome as close to here as we can, like that. You can also come control R over here and just add in a loop cut and then go Alt S and just to bulge that out a little bit. Just like that. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. That is that part done. Um, yeah, so what is there else, else is there to do? So adding in the wire, we still have to do that. So grab this guy here, tab into edit mode. Just select this loop over here, go Shift D to duplicate it, right click to let go. S to scale, okay, disable proportional editing. 
then go S to scale it up to here. And then we're going to go E, Z and extrude it down to about here. And then when you go Shift R, you can repeat that action a few times. So I'm going to make it high poly just in case we want to deform it. We might not. So just bring it down to about here. Okay. And just go to Object, Enable, Shade Smooth. So here we have it pretty much done. I'm just having to think about it. Um, yeah, that's it. So let's go Shift A. We're going to go add in a quick empty. And what I'm going to do is go Control I to inverse the selection. Then I'm going to go G, X and just move this guy over here. So it's roughly in the middle of the empty here. And then holding in Shift, I'm going to select the empty. Then I'm going to go Control P and I'm going to go to um, Set Parent to Object, Keep to Transform. So now if we grab this empty, we rotate it, we can see everything follows along. And when we do um, our rendering, we can really pose this guy as well, which is really going to help a lot. But this is pretty much the modeling done. I hope it wasn't too confusing. I know I did a little bit of advanced stuff and some advanced um, kind of modeling methods, but I hope you guys were able to follow along. So next we're gonna get into our lighting and our materials and setting up a nice backdrop as well. Okay, so the first we're gonna do is come over here to our render settings. We're gonna make sure the render engine is set to EV. Come down and enable ambient occlusion and also screen space reflections. Drop down this little tab here and we're gonna come and enable refraction as well. What we're gonna do now is go Shift A. We're gonna go to our light settings and add in an area light. Then we're gonna go G, Z and just move this guy up. Now you're gonna notice that our ear um, earphones here are quite small compared to the light. What we're going to do is go to our light settings here and we're going to just increase the size here to 4. Now because our scene is um, quite large we're also going to have to increase the power quite a lot more so it's not dark. So I'm going to make it a value of 700 and hit enter. If you find it's dark you can always bump it up but I'm just going to leave it at that. Then I'm going to go S, X and just scale this guy along the X like that. Let's go to our right orthographic view and then we're going to go R just to rotate this almost 45 degrees. Then we're going to go G and just move this guy over here to the front. So it's like this. Go back to your right orthographic view, go Shift D, move this guy here and just rotate it towards facing towards the front like that. So if we went Z and we went render, we're going to see this is what our lighting is. And at the moment it does look a little bit underpowered, but we're also going to add in a HDRI. I'm going to put a link in the description below to HDRI Haven, um, where you can down download 100% free HDRI. So go ahead, download one, and then you're going to come here to your world settings. To add in a HDRI file, all we have to do is come here, click on this tab, go to the environment texture, go open, and I've got one saved onto my computer, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab it, one that I liked. So here I've placed it in. And we can see now we have HDR lighting. We can also come here to our strength and I'm just gonna make it point free. Um, depending on your HDRI, you can come and mess around with this value, but I think point free generally works quite well for me. Okay, so now that we have that done, I'm gonna go Shift A, I'll go to my uh, mesh options, add in a plane. You obviously don't have to do this, I just like this backdrop. So I'm gonna go R, X, 9, 0, hit enter. Then we're going to go G, Y, and just move this guy back in our scene to about here. Then we're going to go S to scale it up, and then S, X, and scale it up to about here. We'll mess around with it in a little bit. Let's just go to our front view. We're going to go Shift A. Add in a camera. With this camera selected, we're going to go G, Y, and just move it back. Hit zero with that camera selected to go into your camera view. Go to your camera settings. Make the focal length 85. And then with the camera selected, you can just hit a G and hit your middle mouse wheel. And you can just move back in the scene. I've just realized my screencast keys are not enabled. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so you can see here, just G, middle mouse wheel, and just zooming back. So we're gonna go with a zoom like this. So grab the backdrop here if you have to and just scale it up so it fills in the space. You can also go SX and scale it along the X if it's too short. So just something like this. Go Control A and apply the scale on this guy as well. Now let's go to our shading view here. Go into your camera view, go Z and go rendered. And with this backdrop selected here, we're gonna go new. And let's just call it BG for background. And what we're gonna do is go Shift A, search. We're gonna get a gradient texture. And we're gonna grab this principal shader. We're gonna go X and delete. Then we're gonna go Shift A, search. We're gonna get an emission shader. We we'll take the color, plug it into the color here, and take the emission, plug it into the surface here. We're going to make it spherical instead of linear, and then go to Edit Preferences, 
go to your add-ons, just search over here, make sure Node Wrangler is enabled. So make sure Node Wrangler is enabled. So now you can grab this node over here, the gradient texture, and you can go Control T, and that's gonna add in these two nodes here, so a mapping node and a texture coordinate. We're gonna take the object here, plug it into the vector over here, and it looks all black, but if we actually move over here, you can see there is a, a little white um, spot there. So what we need to do is come over here to the scale, and if you hold in shift and you just drag that to a smaller amount in the X, um, just it might be a little bit different for you, but I'm gonna drag mine down to about a value like this. And the smaller you make it, the bigger it's gonna be. I know it makes no sense, but this is how it works. You would come to the Y value here, and if you drag that smaller, it's gonna get bigger up like that. So I'm just gonna go with something like that for now. Then I'm gonna go Shift A, search, get a color ramp node. I'm gonna place this color ramp node between the gradient texture and an emission shader. I'm gonna grab this white value up here and we're gonna make it a blue like this. We're gonna hit the little plus, that's gonna add in another tab in the middle. And we're gonna make this guy a bit of a darker blue like that. We're gonna come here to the linear and we're gonna make it a B spline. That's gonna soften things up a little bit. So if you go to our camera view, this is what we should see. Now you can mess around with these sliders um, come over here, this could be different for you, so just decrease these numbers here if you don't like what you're seeing. So you can make the X quite small and make the Y a little bit larger. The more larger you make this Y value, the um, more it's gonna come in like that. You might like that look, but I'm just gonna go with something like this. That looks really cool for me at the moment. And you can also come here if it's not bright enough and just bump the strength of this emission up to two if you want. But I'm just gonna leave mine at one. And I like that kind of backdrop, it just works for me. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. So what we're gonna do next is um, just start adding materials to this guy over here and just make it look really awesome. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by selecting this main body over here. We're gonna go new and create a material. And I'm just, I'm not gonna name it anything, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. And let's just come here and what I'm gonna do is make the base color here a darker color like this like a kind of a gray, we're gonna come here to the metallic, increase it all the way up to one, and then bring down the roughness a little bit. So let's go into our camera view here, just go Z, go render it, and let's see what that looks like. So that should be the kind of material we're looking for. What we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to down to our materials tab, and make sure we're in edit mode. We're gonna hit the little plus one more time, go new. And what we're gonna do is select this face in the middle. So go to face select, just select this face in the middle here, Hold in control plus and just grow the selection. We're just growing it all the way up to here. So all of these are selected and then we're gonna give it that material. And we can call it chrome if we want to because it's gonna be a chrome material. Um, okay, so I might have given it too much. So just select this loop of faces here, go control plus once and then give it that material. Okay, so these ones now have this chrome material. So with this chrome selected, we're gonna come here and drag up the metallic value and bring down the roughness. So this is what we should see. We don't wanna make it too reflective, but just a little bit of roughness will really work here. Then what we're gonna do is go back to edit mode. We're also gonna select all of these faces here. So I'm just selecting this loop of faces. I'm gonna go control plus just to grow that selection to here. And I'm gonna give it that same material. Then what we're gonna do is um, just tab out of edit mode for now. Select this guy, hit H to hide it. Let's just tab back into edit mode and what I'm gonna do is just select this guy here. Go control plus to grow the selection. Control minus just to shrink it if you go too much. And what we're gonna do is just hit plus, go new and assign. And we're just gonna give this guy a kind of like a bluish plastic material. So we're gonna increase the roughness a little bit as well. Tab out of edit mode and this is what it's gonna look like just like that, it's looking really good. So in object mode, we can go Alt-H just to unhide this guy again. And then what we're gonna do is select this guy, and we're gonna go New, and I'm just gonna call it Plastic. And I'm gonna say Plastic Soft, because it's gonna be kind of like a soft plastic. Then we're gonna come over here down to our um, transmission. We're gonna drag this value all the way up to one. Then we're gonna come to our material settings here, Go down and what we wanna do is come down to the settings, go to blend mode, we wanna make that alpha hashed. And the shadow mode, we wanna make alpha hashed as well. Then we wanna come up here and just bring this roughness amount down a little bit. Come to our color here, make it fully white and then bring it in this way a little bit. So now we have that soft plastic looking material. We can also tab into edit mode, 
go to your edge select and I might just grab this edge and this edge and then enable proportional editing and then go Alt S and just um, extrude it or scale it out I should say a little bit just bulge it out like that it needs, needs a little bit more volume I feel and with this guy just select these loops and just go hit T to bring up your tool options go down and just get the smooth tool here and just smooth that out a little bit I think okay that's a lot better so now we have those materials we're gonna select this guy at the bottom we're gonna go new and we're gonna give this guy a metallic value all the way up to one and then bring that roughness in just a bit and we want to come and just make this a bit darker like that so that's gonna be that color and tap into edit mode of this guy select this wire down the bottom and we're gonna go new create a new material for that you can call it wire if you want and we're just gonna make this guy black but I actually with my original I just applied a um, I applied a texture to it but I'm not gonna do it with this one just keeping it basic and just bring the roughness on that guy down a little bit so here we have those materials applied so I'm going to select this empty here and I'm going to go R, Z and just rotate it towards the back a little bit like that. Then I'm going to go G, X and just move it over to the side a bit. Then what I'm going to do is just hide these two for now. Just select all of these guys and go Shift, D, X and move one over here to the side. Select this empty, go R, Z and rotate it in like this. Then you can go Alt H again to unhide those lights and now we should see this over here. Okay, so the one thing we just forgot, just select this guy in here, that plate, go new, and let's just give that guy a black color and bring the roughness down on it a little bit. And that is what I um, was kind of had originally. So you guys can spend as much time as you want with the lighting and the materials. I think I might just actually grab this light here, bump the strength up to 900, and then also go Shift D and just bring one from the front here, shift D and then bring one from the bottom. Okay, so that looks quite cool. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. So what we're gonna do is just quickly go to render and just give this guy a test render and see what it looks like. And there we have it. So here we have some earphones. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. And um, like I said, these guys are kind of based off ones that I have laying around. So um, yeah, it was a little bit tricky explaining everything. I didn't always have the words and I hope you guys were able to learn something. I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.